caucus meeting for Monday, February 26, 2024. We have 22 items for original consideration. If the clerk would please read item number one. Item number one, a public hearing for, regarding Central Parkway sidewalk improvement project. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Okay. I'm sorry, we have three public hearings. Mm -hmm. We have three public hearings. I think we have one. one public hearing. Item number one for original consideration. Item number one for original consideration. A resolution calling for a public hearing to amend City Code Chapter 93, Civilian Police Review, Review, Review Board, Section 6, Term Limits, Holdovers, and Vacancy. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number two. Item number two for original consideration. A resolution calling for a public hearing creating a special assessment district on a portion of North College Street. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number three. Item number three for original consideration. A resolution supporting Assembly Bill A7652 and Senate Bill S7546, authorizing the City of Schenectady to establish a speed camera enforcement demonstration program in school zones. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number four. Item number four for original consideration. A resolution in support of Assembly Bill A7653 and Senate Bill S7545 relating to adjudications and owner liability of traffic control signals. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number five. Item number five for original consideration. A resolution in support of bills A7656 and S7547 requiring a petition in summary proceeding to recover possessions of real property in the city of Schenectady to allege proof of compliance with local laws requiring rental residential property registration and licensure. Discussed in committee with objection on consent. Item number six. Item number six for original consideration. A resolution supporting Assembly Bill A7058 and Senate Bill S7409 to increase the membership of the Special District Operation and Development Committee, the DSAD and DSIC. Discussed in committee with objection and on consent. Item number seven. Item number seven for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the Department of Finance to make budget amendment to the 2024 operating budget. Discussed in committee with objection and on consent. Item number eight. Item number eight for original consideration. A resolution appointing Christopher Marney to the Ethics Board. Roll call by Ms. DeToro. Item number nine. Item number nine for original consideration. A resolution confirming the appointment of Anthony Fowler as the primary representative and Arthur Butler as the alternate representative of the Human Rights Commission to the Civilian Police Review Board. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 10. Item number 10 for original consideration. A resolution accepting a donation of a 2021 Ford Mach-E fully electric vehicle from Metro Ford for use by the Schenectady Police Department. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 11. Item number 11 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an intermunicipal cooperation agreement with Schenectady County for the distribution of funding awarded by the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services to support local enforcement agencies. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 12. Item number 12 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of a vacant lot on 8 Grand Street for $8,000. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 13. Item number 13 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of a vacant lot on 8 Wagner Avenue for $2,500. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 13. Item number 14. For, okay. for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of 504 Page Street for $35,000. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 15. Item number 15 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the sale of 801 Holland Road for $45,000. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 17. Item number 16. <laughs> yeah. for, <laughs> for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the settlement of a claim by State Farm Mutual Automobile Insurance Company as subrogate of Sandra Stapleton. Thank you. Item number 17. Item number 17 for original consideration. A resolution recognizing Women's History Month. This uh, item will be taken out of order and presented by Council Member Patrick. Item number 18. Item, num item number 18 for original consideration. A resolution recognizing David Dariano of Metro Ford Sales. This item will be taken out of order and presented by Council Member Mutaveran. 
Item number 19. Item number 19 for original consideration. A resolution recognizing James Griffin for his 40 years of service in the city of Schenectady. Thank you. This item will be taken out of order and presented by myself. Item number 20. Item number 20 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the issuance of revocable permit number 680 to Miller Restaurant for a sign that will overhang the city's right of way at 500 State Street, Schenectady, New York. Discussed in committee without objection and on consent. Item number 21. Item number 21 for original consideration. A resolution authorizing the issuance of revocable permit number 681 to Pierce Renewables for a sign that will overhang the city's right of way at 155 Erie Boulevard, Schenectady, New York. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. Item number 22. Item number 22 under contract and supply. A resolution awarding the bid and contract for the Schenectady Municipal Golf Course Golf Road Maintenance Building Electrical Upgrades to BW Electrical Services LLC in the amount of $80,856 and no cents. Discussed in committee without objection on consent. If there's nothing more to come before the City Council Caucus, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved by Mr. Mudavir and second by Ms. Patrick. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting for Monday, February 26, 2024. If you just please all rise for the invocation. We don't have anyone here today, so I will be offering the invocation. Father, we come before you and ask that you will be here in the presence, Lord, as we conduct the business of the city. We thank you for everyone who has assembled here. Lord, we thank you for the public coming out. We thank you for all the staff that is here and ask that you will um, be with us as we conduct this business, Lord, and just watch over us continuously as we go about our daily lives. We thank you for all that you have blessed us with. God, we thank you for the opportunity to recognize an employee who has given a number of years of service to the city. We ask that you bless him and his family and all of his coworkers that he leaves here in the city, that you will continue to uh, allow them to do the work uh, of the city and thank them. We want to thank them for their service. These and all blessings we ask in your name, amen. I would ask for Nancy Dustachu to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just before, before um, uh, Mr. Williams collects the, all of the signature sheets, if there's anyone who wants to sign up to discuss the public hearing, which is about Central Parkway, if you haven't signed up on the public hearing, we'll give you an opportunity to do that at this time. Thank you. If the clerk would please call the roll. Mr. Toro? Here. Mr. Farley's absent. Mr. Mancini's absent. Mr. Matuveran? Present. Ms. Patrick? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Ms. Porterfield? Here. Thank you. We have three out of order, out of order resolutions. Resolution number 17, women's, women's uh, resolution for Women's History Month. I'd like to call on Councilmember Patrick to present this resolution. Madam President, may I have the floor? You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you. Hello. Um, so March is Women's History Month, and I'm pleased to be able to present this resolution to recognize and celebrate Women's History Month. Whereas in 1980, President Jimmy Carter designated the first week of March as National Women's History Week, noting that, quote, the achievements, leadership, courage, strength, and love of the women who built America was as vital as that of men whose names we know so well. And whereas 
Since 1987, Women's History Month has been officially recognized by the United States Congress and celebrated during March. And whereas, Women's History Month is dedicated to the accomplishments and achievements of women of every race, class, and ethnic background throughout United States history that are often overlooked. And whereas the theme for 2024's Women's History Month is women who advocate for equity, diversity, and inclusion, recognizing women throughout the country who understand that for a positive future, we need to eliminate bias and discrimination entirely from our lives and institutions. And whereas women from every background have long realized that an uneven playing field will never bring equality or justice and have courageously advocated for fairness in our institutions and our social interactions. And whereas recognizing the achievements of women in all facets of life, science, community, government, literature, art, sports, medicine, has a huge impact on the development of self-respect and new opportunities for girls and young women. And whereas women have been inspirational leaders, not only in advancing their own rights of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also in other social justice movements, including the abolitionist movement, the industrial labor movement, the civil rights movement, and the gay rights movement, now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and city council of the city of Schenectady do hereby pause in their deliberations to recognize and celebrate Women's History Month in March 2024 and acknowledge and salute the critical role that women have played in the development, success, and achievements of Schenectady and the United States. So may I make this motion? Um, do you need a second, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, the motion passes. Thank you. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Cora Schroeder, who works for Representative Paul Tonko, and I'd like her to say a few words about a women's march that's happening this week and accept this resolution on behalf of the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmel Patrick, and thank you, City Council, and thank you, Mayor McCarthy. So real quick, hello, good evening, everyone. As Carmel so graciously said, I am Cora Schroeder, and I want to not take up too much time, but I wanted to make a significant announcement. And that announcement is that this Sunday, which is March 3rd, the first Sunday of the month, my friend Tammy and I, Tammy say hello, we have put together, we got our heads together and we thought and we thought and we said, hey, let's do a March for Women. For all that Carmel said, I'm not going to reread this, but take a moment to think of a woman in your life, of women who have been in your life, and women who have allowed your life to progress over the thousands of years women have been here. So March 3rd, which is a Sunday at 9 a.m. here on the steps of City Hall, we will begin a march. We will begin a march to celebrate women and I would love to see everybody there. You do not have to be from Schenectady. You can be from wherever. You do not have to be a woman. You can come and just celebrate. Celebrate with a banner, celebrate with your family, celebrate with a shirt, celebrate and remember women. For, to, for May, March is Women's History Month. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
The next out of, or, out of order resolution is a resolution recognizing James Griffin for his 40 years of service to the city of Schenectady. And I ask Council Member Mutabaran to please take the, the uh, podium. I'd like to invite Mr. Griffin and everyone coming to behind the rail, please. Okay. <laughs> May I have the floor? Yes. Well, before I read the official resolution, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, because I've known you for a very long time. And uh, you and my brother are friends. And so I remember Jim's store and all the stuff in the neighborhood. So, you know, it really gives me great pleasure. And I wanted to be the person to be able to present this to you. And on top of that, the reason that I actually knew about it is because your co-workers thought so highly of you that they reached out and said, hey, he's retiring. We're going to miss him, but we'd like to, for the council to do a resolution. So I think that speaks very highly of who you are as a person. Not that I didn't already know, but the people that you spent 40 years, not the entire 40, some of them, but the people that you worked with day to day thought it not robbery to reach out and to say, you know, we'd like for him to be recognized. So I know that we talked and you said give you your flowers while you're here. So tonight you're getting your flowers. Not literally, we try that, but anyway, that's another conversation. But so tonight we'd like to give you the flowers on behalf of your coworkers who brought your name forward and also the city council. Whereas James Griffin began his career with the city of Schenectady on September 17th, 1984. And whereas James Griffin served his country for three years in the United States Army as a combat engineer, 12B, 12B, before joining the city workforce. And whereas James worked 28 years in the Bureau of Service Streets Department, paving streets, filling potholes, plowing snow, and sweeping streets. And whereas James worked 12 years in the sewer department, his responsibilities included inspecting condition of sewer lines for leaks, rust, spots, and other defects installing new sewer, line, sewer lines and repairing existing ones, Install, installing new water mains and repairing existing ones, repairs to manholes, catch basins, and other structures in the sewer system. And whereas his continuous commitment to excellence during his many years of service this city earned him the respect of his coworkers who had this to say about him. Quote, I really enjoyed working with Griff. He's funny, conscientious, conscientious and a good guy. He's one of the few left from the good old days, and I mean good and old in a good way. And whereas another coworker said, I only speak for myself. James is a wise and compassionate man who worked hard and played harder as he truly enjoys the finer things in life. James enjoys joking and laughing as much as he loved a good debate, whether for sharing or acquiring wisdom and knowledge. We were blessed to have gotten to know him over the years, and we wish him all the best as he enters his new, exciting chapter of his life, end quote. And whereas the duties James performed, though not glamorous, were essential to the operation of the city. He maintained a strong work ethic, showed dedication, and hard work throughout his long career, which has been instrumental to the city's success. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Schenectady City Council and Mayor Gary R. McCarthy do hereby pause in their deliberations to recognize James Griffin for his 40 years of service in the city of Schenectady and congratulate him and wish him well on his retirement. I'd like to move this. Can I have a second? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Thank Congratulations. <laughs>
The next out of order resolution is item number 18, a resolution recognizing David Dariano of Metro Ford Sales. I'd like to call on Council Member Mutu Varen to pre present this resolution. Madam President, you have the floor. A resolution recognizing Dave Dariano of Metro Ford Sales. Whereas the Schenectady School District wanted to obtain Schenectady Police Engagement Officer to interact positively with students and the community, and whereas to advance the New York State Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative Plan as approved by the Schenectady City School on March 22nd, 2021. And whereas in compliance with regulation from the Commission of Education, a written contract between the Schenectady School District and the Schenectady Police Community Engagement Officer was drafted. And whereas this contract was signed by Mayor Kerry McCarthy and Superintendent Annabel Solar, establishing the Schenectady Police Community Engagement Officer Program. And whereas the Schenectady Police Department desired to expand this successful program and develop new community partnership to further the goals of the Schenectady School District and the Community Engagement Officer Program. And whereas Community Engagement Officer Sergeant Charles Romfeld, with the goal to increase positive interaction, to raise awareness to the Schenectady Police Department work in the schools and to develop new partnership in the community as Metro Ford Sales Inc. if they were interested in partnering to support the program. And whereas David Dariano of Metro Ford Inc. seeing value in supporting the program and the City of Schenectady Police Department provide to the community generous offer to donate a 2021 Ford Mustang Mackey electric car. And whereas on March 20, 2024, the vehicle was brought to the city Schenectady Police Department and to the Schenectady Council Committee meeting for a visual inspection. Whereas this donation will enhance the program, provide more positive interaction with the student at the Schenectady School District and increase the efficiency of officer response within the school district, ultimately serving student, their family and the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor, Gary R. McCarthy, and the City Council do hereby pause in their deliberation to recognize David Dariano of Metro Ford Sale Inc. for your donation to our Police Department Community Engagement Officer Program. Madam President, I move this. May I have a second? Second by Ms. Patrick. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. I wasn't aware I had to speak. <laughs> Metro Ford has been in Schenectady doing business for 45 years, and we've been protected by the police. Our children have been educated by the school district. It's an honor to be able to do this. As a parent, a lot of times you don't get a pat on the back for doing things raising your children, and I know in police force and school district, there's not a lot of pats on the back, but this is our way of just giving back like he said, it came down, it was, it was an email that came over to our office and said, would you like to donate a car? <laughs> and we, we got the email and our, our CPA happened to be there when we got the email doing some end of the year stuff and I walked in and I said, is, is this possible? Can we donate a car? He did some numbers and such and he says, yeah, you're in a position to be able to do this. So it was perfect timing. It was, we, we didn't think of it, it wasn't us. The, um, any recognition isn't for me personally, it's, it's for all the hardworking people at Metro Ford and all the hardworking people here. I mean, the city, it's a great city, we're glad to be part of it. Couldn't be, couldn't be more proud to give this and to donate it. And a Mustang Mach-E all electric, what better car for the electric city? <laughs> Thank you, and thank you for the donation. Yeah. <laughs> what was 
Anything? We have one public hearing tonight, and I just want to remind everyone that the public uh, time for the public hearing is for, it's has been extended to four minutes, and I ask everyone to res respectfully only speak on the topic of the public hearing. Thank you. This time I ask for approval of the minutes from February 20, 12, 2024. Moved by Ms. Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Mutibaran. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing number one. Public hearing number one regarding the Central Parkway Sidewalk Improvement Project. I have four people signed up to speak. Florence McConville. Hello, everyone. Um, it's been many years since I've been in here, but uh, I'm glad to be back. Um, I live on Central Parkway, and I'm happy that the city is going to be doing the sidewalks. Um, my only concern is the water that gets in front of my house. I've had many serious conditions, excessive water coming into the house my furnace breaking, the house sinking a little bit, and uh, the sewer problems. Mm. But um, I think this will all get fixed with the new excitement of putting the sidewalks in and fixing the street and the curbs. So that's all I have to say. And I'm happy that the city is doing this, and um, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Janice Thompson. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Sweep it down a little bit. Uh, yes, I'm really glad we're having the work done on our streets. I have a few questions. Uh, they're not long ones. Uh, my first question is, how much is the city paying towards our sidewalks and curbs? The city itself, how, how much are they paying? Does anyone know that answer? So ma'am, today, tonight, you just have an opportunity to be heard publicly on your comments. If you have any questions specifically, we need to um, email those questions and those, they can be answered. Tonight, we'd like to hear your comments. We did deliver um, packets to right. all of the individuals on Central Parkway, yes. but tonight, we will not be able to answer questions from here. We'll oh. just hear your comments. You can ask okay. your questions, and we will record them and get them answered for you. Okay, so all of my comments are a question, so I can't get any answers on those. Not tonight, but if you'd, like to do, if you'd like to hand in those questions, we'll make sure that they are answered for you, as long as you have the contact information there. Okay. If you want to answer your questions out loud so everyone can hear them, you're welcome to oh. do that. Okay, so, so my next question is... There's a slight difference between the principal on the 10-year plan as opposed to the 15-year plan. Minor, but it's a $110 difference, and I just wondered why that is. My third question is the travel lane is two feet shorter than what exists now. Would that be narrowed on both sides of the street? And is it because of something with the curbs and the sidewalks that are making it necessary to, to narrow the travel lane? Those are my questions. And I just wondered how many people from Central Parkway are here tonight. If everyone from Central Parkway could raise your hand. There they are. I'm just going to count them. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, if you'd like to hand it in your... It looks like 16, okay. about. Thank you. If you'd like to hand in your questions so yeah. we actually have them in writing, we'll take yeah. them from you. I'll do that. You want me to do that now? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's on the front of my sheet, so... It's okay, as long as they're... You can get it back. <laughs> okay. Here. They're on the right three. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Julie Pareto. Hello, good evening. I'm Julie Pareto. I'm here with my husband. We both own a house together on Central Parkway. Um, and I'm really, really happy that this initiative is moving forward. Um, we love the neighborhood. We've lived there for about seven years, and I think it's really gonna increase the walkability of the neighborhood and really help with safety for the people who walk. Um, so, and I really appreciate also the payment plan. I think that's gonna be very helpful, but I did have some concerns about the concept and the plan that was chosen that I wanted to voice. Um, we noticed that it's taking away the street parking and um, that is and it's narrowing the driving and taking away the on-street parking. And I know that for us, when we went to purchase our home, we took street parking into consideration for when we had family gatherings and holidays. Um, and it's just gonna be an inconvenience for us to have to have our friends and family park a block or two down and then walk to our home. Um, <clears throat> and you know that was a big factor as well when we were home buying. So I, it, we don't wanna move, we love our neighborhood, but when we go to resell our house in the future, I just worry about how that may impact our, the cost that we will get for our house. Um, not having that street parking available. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, I want the, the sidewalk initiative, we want the upgrade, um, but is there a way that we can be looking at other concepts and plans to be able to keep the on-street parking? And that was it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Jessica Padula. Hello. Uh, I'm not used to s not facing all the people, usually when I lead things. Um, so I've never been to anything like this before. Um, I live at 875 Central Parkway, so right on the corner, it's the very first nice house. Ma'am, you, you have to address The that. very first nice house over on the side. Um, when I was asked to sign the petition for this project, I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention because I'm not used to people coming to my door. I keep to myself and, you know, whatever she was proposing seemed fine enough, signed it, the end. Um, I, what I didn't realize is that I was being asked to pay for my own sidewalk uh, and I'm not in a position to be able to do that. If I had that amount of money, I would probably fix my garage. Over the summer, there was, um, someone stole a vehicle and then parked it in my three-car garage. So I got called while I was out of my home by the police to ask me to come home and see what this stolen car was about. I didn't have the money to fix the um, garage door and so there's uh, wood in front of it. And um, yeah, I'm all for like improving the neighborhood, certainly. Certainly, we all wanna have a nicer neighborhood, but what I'm concerned about is, one, I can't pay for another sidewalk. Two, are we gonna make it so welcoming for people to be walking down the street that they'll have uh, more packages stolen from my front porch? Am I gonna have my car broken into more times than it already has been in the last eight years? So, yeah, I'm pretty upset about it. I'm 42 years old and I've never voluntarily come into a government building to speak publicly, and here I am. I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh wait, no, no, I have another thing because I still have four minutes. I am a single mother and I am a widow to an active duty Navy serviceman and I was able to purchase this home from the settlement that I received from his active duty death. That was my introduction to Central Parkway. And here we are eight years later. I don't have any money left. Thanks. Thank you. I don't have anyone else signed up to speak this public hearing, so I declare the public hearing closed. I'll ask the clerk to read any communications and petitions. Communications presented to the City Council for Monday, February 26, 2024. 
Under official from Mayor Gary R. McCarthy, a list of appointments dated February 26, 2024. Under general from Dave Connolly and Michael Murphy, an email with questions and suggestions for the Central Parkway Sidewalk Improvement Program. And from Rich and Mary Jo Hominick, an email in support of the Central Parkway Sidewalk Improvement Program. Under petitions, there were none. Thank you. Ask on council members to provide any committee reports. This time we'll have pri privilege of the floor related to the legislative agenda, and I have no one signed up to speak, so I declare the public comment on the legislative agenda closed. This time I ask for approval of the legislative consent agenda. Moved by Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Mutavaren. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We do have one roll call vote. Resolution. Resolution number eight. If the clerk would please read item number eight. Item number eight for original consideration, a resolution appointing Christopher Marney to the ethics board. I need a motion. Moved by Mr. Williams, second. It has to be seconded. Second by Ms. Ms. Patrick. <laughs> Any discussion on this item? Mr. Williams. Uh, so I, I really want to make sure I, my comments are received in kind. I think it is a poor show of sound judgment to refuse an individual that is volunteering to assist in filling a vacancy, especially in uh, committees and boards throughout our city where we've highlighted that uh, participation is an ongoing challenge. Uh, to this point, I have still not heard any uh, comments or feedback with respect to why uh, this individual would not be an appropriate member of this board. Um, but again, I feel as local officials, it is our responsibility to make sure we are not only advocating to the community and the residents alike, but to make sure we also justify our opinions and decisions when they, in fact, uh, go against uh, uh, something with respect to, to, to this. So I think sh displaying our uh, lack of consideration to why this individual would not be a good fit, I think, is not the collaborative government that I seek to be a part of. And I would hope that as a body, uh, we can understand the ramifications of saying to the community, no, and not offering a resolution forward or identifying what areas make this individual not an appropriate candidate to fulfill that position. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Mr. Toro? Mr. Mutuvaran? Yes. Ms. Patrick? No. Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Porterfield? Yes. The item fails. You need, we need four affirmative votes to pass a piece of resolution, so the item fails. It's three to two. This time, we have privilege of the floor regarding general city business. I have three people signed up to speak. First person is Fred DeRocher. Hello, hello. My name is uh, Fred DeRocher. I'm a nurse at Ellis Hospital. I've been a nurse for going on 28 years now. I worked at St. Clair's first and then came over at Ellis Hospital in 2008. So I've been a nurse in this community for a long time. And what I'm coming up here to talk about as a member of Ellis Hospital, but also as a member of the executive committee for the nurses union at Ellis Hospital. I wanna make you all here aware of what's going on with our negotiations that are currently um, going on. For over the last year we've been negotiating and we normally negotiate with Ellis Hospital management and it's just simply Ellis Hospital. It is different now. They have upper management is Trinity Healthcare, a billion dollar company that's nationwide their point person, Deb Solomon, comes around. She told us at a meeting that basically Trinity brings her around when they need help with labor problems. So apparently the nurses now are a labor problem to Trinity. Um, 
This is, we have a lot of great managers at Ellis, but this upper management with Trinity is very much a problem. They're trying to, they're, very, they're cutting services. You can look to rents their county um, with the Burdett Women's Center. They've already cut services at Ellis, Men Ellis Hospital that you may not even know about. We don't, you know, since the pandemic, they've cut the pediatric department, they've cut med surge beds. There's less beds there than just four years ago when we had this pandemic. There's less beds there, there's less beds in the emergency room, there's half the adult psychiatric beds. Um, they have done this with no remorse or no conscience of the community. That's why when we, you know, their idea, they're not for profit and they don't act like that. They're acting for profit. Even though there's less beds in that hospital right now, there's less nurses than there was four years ago too. So the nurses now take care of more patients. I work in a crisis unit. The nurses in the ER, when I worked through the pandemic in the ER, we had less patients then than we do now. Uh, there's less beds in the ER, so there's more people waiting. There's longer wait times than I've ever, over 20 years in the ER, there's longer wait times than I've ever seen. They do not listen with negotiations. They're very much trying to, um, they aren't offering us anything, to be quite honest. They're, they're talking about retaining nurses and they're cutting our benefits, saying that they are, they've looked throughout the community and ours are above average, so they need to cut them. Um, they've cut them for their other workers who don't have a voice, but we're not gonna let that happen to us. Talk about, I was a former St. Clair's person. We all know about the St. Clair's pension. So they are asking us to sign off on selling out our pensioners that was frozen in 2006. And they want, as part of negotiations, us to write that off so they can sell that off. They, it's not a problem to them financially. They want to get rid of it to clear the books for Trinity to fully take over. Because they aren't not for profit, they are for profit. And they aren't good for this community. And we are going to need everybody to be aware of this as we go forward. And that's what we're here for today. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Don Zip. Good evening. I, my name is Don Zip. I am actually a resident here in Schenectady City. Um, I am also an Ellis employee, but I am a Bellevue Women's Center employee. I am I'm the president of our bargaining unit for NISNA. I sit at the um, negotiation table. I stand on the line for all my fellow nurses and even more so for my patients and for my babies that I take care of in the NICU. Um, I am here because as we are um, embarking upon this merger, my real concern is women's health. It seems to be under major attack within the United States. If anybody has been paying attention to the news across the country, it is very scary. And it is now hitting the capital region. Um, I was applaud the um, stand for women and for women's rights and for women and what they've done in um, history. Well, it is our time to stand as the women at Bellevue Women's Center and as a hospital that takes care of women. And that is something that is really important. One of the things that I want to bring to the forefront is that Paul Middleton actually spoke yesterday at a local church in the stockade and spoke to the community there. And when he was addressed and asked about the services that he was going to be um, that have been taken away and continue to be discussed and being taken away his phrase on quote was we can't be everything to everyone the problem is is we need to be what is important for the people of this community we cannot afford to lose any more services we need to watch what they've done with Burdett because the health, health, the Catholic health care system is literally dismantling health care for women across the country and in New York State. Down in Long Island, they've closed maternity wards. In New York City, they're attempting to close maternity wards. These are the Catholic health care systems. Again, we cannot afford. He said that, don't worry, women who are in labor don't take the cabs to the hospitals. I have to tell you, women in labor take anything that they can. I have actually caught babies in the circle in front of Bellevue in a, in a taxi cab. So you know what, Paul Milton? 
Women take cabs when they're in labor. And if we keep reducing the things that we need in our community, we are going to be at a great loss. We are putting mothers and babies at risk by doing this. Trinity is actually sitting at our table looking to take more and more and more away from us, the nurses, and for our patients. We have a deficit of approximately 20% on nursing staffing. That means your nurses are taking on anywhere from six to 10 patients when they should only be taking four. And that is a very scary thing because it's our family members that are in the hospital that are being taken care of and they are being, they're not getting the quality care that they require. So I'm begging and I'm coming to you guys to stand on our behalf and, and advocate for the nurses and for the patients and the people of Schenectady. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Lipman. Hi, my name is Jenny. Um, I'm not from this area, but my family is firmly planted here. My husband works at Union College. I'm a nurse in the same department as Fred, the emergency room at Ellis Hospital. And our kids are in school here, and we mean to be here. Um, I'm just joining this group and wanting to talk about staffing. Uh, you know, I'm mostly focused on just on the day-to-day -day taking care of people as a nurse. Fred has been actively involved in the negotiations, but it's gone on for more than a year that they're trying to get our contract negotiated. And for me, I, I started like when the pandemic was just beginning to unfold in 2020. And um, about a year into my job, we lost a tremendous percentage of our nurses. It was like the travel boom when nurses could make three to four times as much as a staff nurse. And I was so upset to see the, the just this beautiful teamwork. We, when in the emergency room, people come in with heart attacks and people run together and, and they know each other's strengths and they're you know, literally saving people's lives working together. And when I saw my staff, the, the, the staff people that I really looked up to that I need to learn from disappearing, I wrote to like all the top leadership at the hospital and the, our board and everything. And I heard back from one person, which is the department, um, the head of our department, the emergency department. He said, well, these things kind of come and go. It'll, it'll iron itself out, this high money, it's gonna pedal out and we'll kind of get a stable staff again. But you know, two, two and a half years later, we are heavily dependent on travel nurses and they're bringing in some lovely nurses. They're really experienced, great nurses, but they have no connection to Schenectady. They don't know our people. They'll be here for a short time, then they move, oh, I'm gonna go do skiing in Colorado next. And that's really not what we need. We need a stable body of nurses to take care of our community. I, mean, I see my neighbors all the time in the ED and what we lost just during my short time here at Ellis with so much staff synchronicity that got broken up and the hospital has not managed to put it back together. We're just heavily dependent on nurses that have no connection to this place. And if it takes us more than a year and the nurses that are negotiating this contract say they are insulting us when we're asking about our, they're taking benefits away. They're, they're trying to talk their way out of these staffing ratio things. I mean, I've barely known anything, but you run for 12 hours, you don't pee, you don't eat, you're, you feel so guilty because you can't take good care of people because you're so overloaded. It's dangerous, you know? And I mean, that's kind of basic. If we don't have enough nurses, like, you'd think we'd want to try to make it decent that nurses could take good care of people and, and having a contract where there's decent staffing and, and, and wages that people agree are reasonable seems like a great place to start. So that's what I wanted to speak in support of. Thank you. Thank you. I have no one else signed up to speak, so I declare the public comment of city business closed. Any miscellaneous business from the council? Mr. Mutuvarin. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to um, thank all the homeowners from Central Parkway who showed up here tonight. Thank you um, for your effort. And I uh, want to especially thank the organizer who has brought us to this point here to make Central Parkway sidewalk and street improvement a reality. So thank you to the organizer. Thank you to all the homeowners for um, gracing us um, this evening and to voice your concern. All the questions on the email that was submitted, our city engineer will address those. And as we move forward the next couple of weeks, we will share more information and uh, we will um, get you involved in terms of um, getting that message over to you as we move forward uh, to make this happen for you in Central Parkway. 
Um, just a reminder um, for the seniors, exemptions are due um, before March 4th, so don't wait on March 4th to file your exemption. That's the enhanced um, senior um, exemption and also um, the senior low income exemption. We recently um, in, um, increased the, um, the exemption so to give more um, advantage to the seniors in our city and I hope that they take advantage of it. So please file your enhanced exemption and your senior exemption before March 4th. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Mutsuberi. Ms. Patrick? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind folks, um, and I hope that the mayor will mention this as well, but um, I've had calls from several different residents in different neighborhoods over the last, just the last few days, uh, talking about the litter issue and the fact that people are putting their trash out when they shouldn't be putting their trash out. Um, you really need to pay attention to the trash schedule, especially right now when, you know, there's a lot of big wind out there and, you know, you can drive up and down the streets and see the trash sort of floating around. Um, so we're all here to take those calls. I continue to, you know, then pass that information on to our Office of General Services. But really, um, I just really implore folks to uh, think about the trash schedule, put your trash out only when you're supposed to put your trash out, um, and make sure that it's secure, uh, especially right now during the, during the winter months, although it doesn't seem like winter right now, uh, given our weather, our beautiful weather this week. But please uh, pay attention to that. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. I can appreciate everyone coming out tonight in the uh, consensus seems to be for Central Parkway to leave it basically the way it is. The discussion has been to narrow the travel lane by approximately two feet. That has not been cast in stone, and part of this process is to have your input tonight in, uh, just ongoing discussions for that final design that'll service the needs of the residents and uh, again make it attractive and uh, hopefully increase the value of the properties. Uh, for Councilmember uh, Patrick, yes, encourage people to follow the litter schedule. Uh, appreciate uh, Councilmember DeToro and Council President Porterfield's time as we're uh, working mm -hmm. on reviewing the trash policies in the city and trying to uh, make modifications to uh, appropriate allocate some of the costs to people that abuse the system. And it doesn't take much effort to pick up a little bit of litter, or make sure your cans are sealed and tightened up because everybody benefits from that. Also, the uh, Schenectady Police Department uh, is going to start another uh, civilian police academy on March 5th and there are still slots available in that so that people who may want to participate in that uh, gain a greater knowledge of the police operations and their community involvement should uh, contact uh, Officer Andrew Danable at the Schenectady Police Department. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. You need four, yes. That's correct. That is correct. Okay, thank you. It's a majority of four to pass anything. There are some things that take five, but it takes a simple majority. Uh, again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I appreciate you coming, bringing your concerns forward, and for this showing from people from Central Parkway. I believe it was 16 is what Ms. Thompson said. So thank you for coming out, and the mayor has already spoken about the process. Um, I want to thank the um, individuals that came from NISNA today to talk about the concerns that are going on there. Appreciate you coming and bringing these things to our attention. Yet we've been reading about it, we know about it, but appreciate you coming out and coming to speak to us regarding that. Uh, Mr. Mutavirin talked about the um, star exemption. So just, so just so you know, March 1st is this Friday. I know it doesn't sound, it sounds far away, but it's Friday. So if you know seniors that need to get their exemption in, it's this Friday. And lastly, as uh, Ms. Schroeder was here to talk about the Women's March this Sunday. And I guess it starts on City Hall steps at 9 a.m. on Sunday, so those of you that want to march. I don't know what the weather's going to be like, so check before you come, so whether you need to bundle up or dress down. If there's nothing else to come before this council, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Ms. Patrick, second by Mr. Williams. All those in favor? 
Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.